If I were to ask you who's going through the most stuff right now in American politics, who's going through the hardest time right now, you might well say Madison Cawthorn, and I would agree with you, because that guy is being hit with scandal after scandal and leak after leak, all because he said some things about top Republicans and the crazy parties and gatherings they've all had. But what really makes this story interesting is it's starting to hurt Madison Cawthorn with his his own allies. He's not just losing the mainstream Republicans, which you might have expected, because they were already wary of him for being out and out MAGA, but now he's starting to lose the MAGA crew, starting to lose the Mar-a-Lago guys. He's starting to lose Donald Trump himself, and quickly, because of all these scandals, and critically, because he's starting to lose in his own primary, he is being booted from Trump world, booted from Mar-a-Lago, because he's no longer useful to them and all of the liabilities are starting to add up. I want to play you a video that's from a little bit ago that sort of almost predicted what's happening right now. They predicted that Trump would stay by Cawthorn, but when the scandals got too big and when he started to look like a loser, people were going to start cutting him out. Madison Cawthorn is running out of chances with the GOP. You look at what Kevin McCarthy said. You look at what Senator Tom Tillis, for example, is doing, throwing his support behind one of Cawthorn's challenges. Talk through how you see this from a reporting perspective. I mean, so Madison Cawthorn, he kind of came out of nowhere in his primary to take over Mark Meadows' seat after Mark Meadows left to become Trump's final chief of staff. Trump backed someone else in that primary, but Cawthorn managed to win and then win in a very comfortable Republican seat, sending him to Congress. And there were early on, there was talk about him being, you know, the Republicans' answer to AOC, that he would be able to bridge this generational divide and bring new Republicans into the party. But but since then, I mean, the way I look at it is that once you're in Congress, you people tend to be divided into either show horses or workhorses. He has most definitely not been a workhorse. He has not been very active in terms of pushing legislation, in terms of actually trying to shape laws as Congress is meant to do. And then there are show horses, people who bring attention to issues, who raise money, who uh, raise, honestly, a lot of times their own profile. And in that sense, Cawthorn has been kind of middling at best. He's really inserted himself into a lot of unnecessary drama. He's backed the president in terms of, you know, January 6th. But along the way, this whole time, Cawthorn has had a habit of exaggerating, of fabricating, of lying at times and to boost his own image, boost his own narrative. And I think that's what's coming back to bite him right now. Talk about the Trump factor a little bit, because at this upcoming rally in North Carolina, the former president has invited Congressman Cawthorn to be a speaker. Yeah, and I, he has Trump's endorsement uh, after, you know, not getting it during his first race. So that is a factor. But one of the things that we've been watching this cycle is Trump has been throwing his support behind people who are not poised to win. And that has him looking a little bit weaker than he has in the past. Now, will uh, Trump uh, backing push Cawthorn over the edge into the 30 percent territory that he needs to get through his primary without having to go to a runoff? Unclear okay. at this time. It is important that Trump is still backing him. But Trump also kind of sees where the wind is blowing. And if Cawthorn looks like he's going down, I'm sure that the former president won't hesitate to cut him loose. And that's exactly what's starting to happen. You're starting to see all of this from some of the closest people from Trump world, including his family, starting to distance themselves explicitly and implicitly from Cawthorn. I want to read this to you. It says, on Friday, the New York Times reported that Representative Madison Cawthorn is starting to lose support from former President Donald Trump and his allies as scandals continue to mount. The deluge of revelation and charges have left him on an island even within his own party, reported Wiseman and Carmi. A political group supporting Town Senator Tom Tillis, Republican of North Carolina, has been pouring money into an ad campaign, accusing Mr. Carthorn of being a fame-seeking liar. The group is supporting the campaign of a more mainstream Republican, State Senator Chuck Edwards, who is running against Mr. Carthorn. And the far-right anti-establishment wing of the party now views the first-term congressman with similar skepticism. As someone 
who was falsely selling himself as a gatekeeper in his state to former President Donald J. Trump. And that's critical. And this is why Trump and company are starting to get wary. Remember, it's not just the scandals, which are bad. And it's not just the fact that he's starting to lose. Because remember, Trump cut out Mo Brooks, not when Brooks publicly disagreed with Trump, but when Brooks publicly disagreed with Trump and was starting to lose in his Senate primary in Alabama, which gave Trump the excuse to cut him out and endorse the person that's almost certainly going to win. Trump gets to look strong and punish one of the people that criticized him. This is what's happening to Cawthorn as we speak. But critically, Trump and his people hate when others act like they control access to Donald Trump. If you say you're the gateway to Donald Trump, Trump thinks you're using him. You're using him for influence and status and money and power and all of that. And Trump hates being used like that because in Donald Trump's mind, he gets to use others. No one gets to use him. And so this is why even within the Trump world, even within Mar-a-Lago, they're kicking him out, booting him out. It says again, the far right wing of the party once viewed Mr. Cawthorn as a young leader with potential. Now its members keep him, keep him at arm's length and view him as a troubled individual who isn't always aligned with the base on the issues. They describe Mr. Cawthorn as someone who is Twitter famous, but who does not work the district and lacks grassroots support at home. Many of them have noted that even Donald Trump Jr., a popular figure on the right, has stayed quiet and made no attempt to come to his defense. Quote, I don't see MAGA voters being quite this forgiving, said longtime Trump advisor Jason Miller. That's where we're at, folks. Trump world is booting Madison Cawthorn. We're in the process of seeing it happen. Maybe, maybe if his poll numbers improve, maybe if it becomes clear that he's going to win his primary, he's going to eke it out against a more establishment candidate. Maybe he'll be welcomed back by Trump into Mar-a-Lago. But the second this guy starts to lose definitively, the booting is going to be all but official. Remember, there's no loyalty in Trump world, even to Trump cultists.